O oh, blessed of my father, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you clothed me. As you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. These are the words of Jesus, and this has been the story of my life. The Fifth Word The Life of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. The Slums of Motijil, Calcutta, 1979. If you're not feeling well, then you can rest whenever you like. No, really, Mother Teresa, it's nothing. Do you know these five words? They represent what Jesus said to his disciples. You did it to me. He is Jesus. All the poor people are. If he could talk, he would thank you. No, Mother, I'm the one who ought to be thanking God for giving me the opportunity to serve him by serving the sick. God bless you, my child. I'll go. Thank you, Ines. Did you know we have the same name? Mother Ines? Mm-hmm. My first name was Agnes. That's how they say Ines in Albania. Skopje, Albania, August 26th, 1910. Drana, look at her. She's got your eyes. But Nicole, she hasn't even opened them yet. Oh, but she will have. You'll see. But what should we call her? We'll call her Agnes. Agnes Boyachu. Hello? Speaking. Yes, I'm Mother Teresa. May I help you? <sighs> All for the greater glory of God. Well? They've awarded me the Nobel Peace Prize. I've always thanked God for giving me such big-hearted parents. Papa, hmm? what are you doing? I'm writing. But who to? To the governor. I'm asking him to build a hospital for the poor. For the poor? Is that why you're working so hard? <laughs> your ideals are worth dedicating your entire life to. Now, children, I need your help. Aga, put some water on to heat. Agnes, warm up some milk. Lazar, help your sisters. I don't know if the children ought to see this. Some things are better learned by example than by words. Mm. Mama, is she part of our family? Yes, my dear. She is poor, and so she is our sister. Agnes, please remember what I am about to tell you. Never ever lift a piece of bread to your lips if you are not willing to share it with others. Mm -hmm. Your eyes shine with a very beautiful light. <laughs> May the Virgin always guide you, my little one. When I was young, I spent hours reading about missionary work. Look, Aga, this missionary's from Albania, just like we are. Of course. So? Nothing. It just seems so incredible to me that someone just like us is in South Africa, helping the poor thousands of miles away from here. Must I really go to Oslo? Yes, Mother. I think so. I don't know. I don't like being the center of attention. I know. But I think you ought to go. I believe that the prestige of this occasion will bring great benefits to the entire church. Ah, very well. But I wanted to be very clear that I'm coming as a representative of the poor. And instead of spending lots of money on a huge banquet, I want the money to be given to the poor people all over the world. <laughs> then that's settled.
When I was young, my love for our Mother in Heaven grew greater and greater. I visited her every afternoon, always asking her the same thing, to help me see what God wanted me to do. I knew that he was asking something of me, but I didn't know what. I was confused. Agnes, what are you doing? I'm praying, Father Jembrekovich. <laughs> so you come to pray when no one's here? Well, yes. That's when the Virgin feels most alone, and I'm sure that she's only listening to me. <laughs> Mother, help me find the path that your son has prepared for me. That afternoon, I finally saw what God wanted me to do. I knew that what God was asking of me was going to be very hard for my mother. Mama? Um, God is calling me to be a missionary. You're not happy, are you? Have you thought this through? Well, it was the Virgin who told me, and every day I can see it more clearly. I want to dedicate my life to serving the poor. He made the decision. Very well, my daughter. But remember that you will always belong completely to Christ. Place your hand in His, and never abandon Him along the way. Oh, how I wish Papa could have been here. My father died when I was still a young girl. After his death, my mother set up a sewing workshop. My sister Aga and I helped as much as we could, and that was how we made a living. A letter from Ireland. Oh? What does it say, Father? I haven't opened it yet. Let's see. Hmm. Your application has been accepted. You'll enter the Loreto congregation as a novice in Ireland. Agnes, you're going to be a missionary. Oh! Look, Papa, look! On the day I left for Ireland, I didn't know whether to be sad because I had to say goodbye or happy because God had opened up a path for me. Father Jan Brekovich. I'm so upset. I can see that. I don't know whether I should tell you to be happy or say that I understand and share your sadness. You're a woman of faith, Drana. I know that a mother doesn't lose a child when she gives her to God, but... Oh, it's just that I feel I'll never see her again. Ireland was so utterly different from Albania. What I was most afraid about was having to speak English. I had taken it into my head that it was a very difficult and foreign language. Hello, my name is Agnes. I come from Albania. <laughs> Hello, Agnes. Welcome to Loretta. You speak my language. Mm -hmm. My name is Erica. I'm from Budapest, but I grew up in Tirana. You know, you're the first Albanian novice here. Come with me. I'll show you your room. And then you'll meet the Mother Superior. Really? But what should I wear? Oh, we don't have that problem here. We all wear the same habit. <laughs> If I eventually go to heaven, it will be because of the way I've had to put up with this ridiculous popularity. I assure you that I hate all of this. But Mother, think about all the people around the world who will be inspired by your example. Oh, you remind me so much of myself when I first arrived in Calcutta. Come on. I was sent to the Loretto Order School in Calcutta in 1929. I was 19 and saw human misery and destitution for the first time. I had to fight to contain my tears in the midst of so much pain. Uh, 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 uh. 
It was then that I started to remember everything I learned as a child. And that's how it happened. You see? <laughs> What are you doing? Well, I'm gonna give Gavrilo one of my sandals. Mama will be mad. I don't think she will. Uh, there's no need to do that. You're right. I'll give you both of them. Why did you do that? You can't just go around giving things away to people. Mama says that the less that we own, the more we can have. That's impossible. Love makes it possible. For a very long time, I thought that I knew exactly what I would be doing until the end of my days. Giving classes and teaching the girls in my school. And I liked the sound of that. Sister Teresa, it's me, Dora. Come in. Sister Teresa, there's a woman in the slums of Moti Chill who gave birth yesterday, and she's so weak that if we don't do something, her baby is going to die of hunger. In Moti Chill? Yes, sister. Mm, we're afraid to go there. That's why we want you to come with us. I can bring some milk from home, and I'm sure I can find some bread. All right, all right, we'll go at once. Hey! What are you carrying? I have to give away these clothes. And, and then will you come and play with me, huh? After that, I have to go with my mother to take care of a sick woman and her son. Why are you doing that? I bet you don't even know her. Gabrillo, if you don't live to be useful, then you have no use to the living. I think I would be afraid to be around sick people all day. Well, Gabrillo, you know what I say. Hmm? That fear is the biggest obstacle of all. Obstacle to what? To flying up to heaven. Ah, yeah! Don't let go of my hand. We're almost there. Sister! Over there, under the big rocks. Come on, don't be afraid. I need you to help me. My mother was right. How can we be afraid if God is with us? We are very lucky that we always have food. Don't you agree, sister? I don't know. I see so many people who are suffering who don't have anything to eat at all. Sometimes I think that it's wrong for us to have plenty to eat while so many people are dying of hunger. You have a heart of gold, Sister Teresa. But don't feel guilty. Have you never thought that if you were not healthy, you wouldn't be able to help them? That was the first time that I realized that God was asking something more from me. I was happy among the poor, and yet there were many moments when I realized I was assailed by doubt. Was God asking more from me? What could it be? Then one day in September 1946, while I was traveling by train to Darjeeling, I clearly heard a new call from God. It was a call within a call. Oslo, Norway, 1979. Bravo! Look, she's not wearing any shoes. Before beginning my speech today, I would like to invite all of you to pray. It is not enough to say, I love God, but I do not love my neighbor. It is very important to realize that love if it is really love, must hurt. I've never heard anyone talk about love that way. Her appearance speaks for itself. 
She doesn't need to utter a word. Her presence is enough to tell us everything. Well, then, that's all for today. Now, let's wash our hands before we eat. Yes, yes mother. mother. Good morning, Sister Teresa. Mother Gertrude. I was just passing by, but I heard that you wanted to see me. How are your students progressing? Very well. They're good students. But there is one thing. Is it something serious, sister? Oh, no. I need your advice, Mother. I'm listening. I told Mother Gertrude about the revelation I had had that day in the train. I felt very strongly that God was asking me to leave everything, even the Loretto Order, and devote myself in body and soul to the poorest of the poor, to live like them and suffer with them. <sighs> If what you're telling me is the work of God, keep me informed. Oh, I shall pray for you, and sister, don't tell anyone about this. Oh, don't worry, mother. Only my confessors know. I shall pray especially for you, Sister Teresa. Following a year of intense prayer, I heard in my heart, stronger than ever, the words of Jesus in the Gospel. As you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. The Pope authorized my exclaustration, and in the summer of 1948, I left the convent altogether. Oh. Mother, stay with me always. That day, I began to look for a place to serve the poorest of the poor. But God had other plans for me. <clears throat> Can you spare something, sister? I haven't eaten for days. My children are dying of hunger. Oh. Here you are, my friend. I'll just keep one to buy something to eat. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. Sister, would you care to make a donation for the Catholic press? Hmm. I'm sorry, but it's the last one I have. God bless you, sister. But I can't accept it. Oh, please take it, Father. I am in the hands of God. He will take care of me. What order do you belong to, sister? I don't recognize your habit. I am Sister Teresa. I'm a missionary. And I'm looking for some way I can help the poor and the ill in Montigil. You have a great deal of work ahead of you, sister. I will be sure to pray for you every day, and I will come to see you. I am Father Julian. Now I have nothing left. At that moment, I was filled with a great sense of peace. I saw things in a different light. Nothing attached me to the world. And it was then, and only then, that I truly understood the words that I had heard when I was little. And that had always echoed inside me. The less we possess, the more we can have. At that moment, I had everything. Lord, help me on this new path. I know you will never abandon me. Help me to believe. Sister! Ah! Father Julian! How did you find me? Here. They gave me this to give to you. For me? At first, I wasn't sure. But when they said it was for a nun who wore a white sari, I just knew. But who would... Uh, someone who has heard about your projects. My projects? I don't know, sister. Perhaps it's a miracle. Then I realized it was the first sign that God was blessing my work, that he would never abandon me. The day finally arrived when I was to meet 
Pope John Paul II. I was filled with joy. It was something I had wanted for a long time. We had so much to talk about, so much work to do. Now, a very important public figure. The Nobel Prize only means that people appreciate what I'm doing. But I'm not doing it for them. It's for God. I know. I've always followed your work very closely. Now your fame is growing. <laughs> your Holiness, my fame can't grow much more. It won't fit in such a small habit. <laughs> <laughs> if only we all had your strength and your smile. She lives on in my memory as a tiny figure whose entire existence was spent in the service of the poorest of the poor, but who was always full of an inexhaustible spiritual energy, the energy of the love of Christ. One day, I found a woman half dead in the street who was being eaten by rats. They didn't want to take her at the hospital. It was then that God made me see the need to build the home of the pure heart, a place where the destitute could recover or die with dignity. On another occasion, I picked up a baby that was only a few weeks old, together with the leprous body of the baby's mother. From that came the home for abandoned children. Mother Teresa of Calcutta died on the 5th of September, 1997. At that point, her order of the missionaries of charity had extended all over five continents, with some 3,000 nuns and 300 novices devoted to serving the poorest of the poor. Voices from all over the world asked for her to be declared a saint because of her love of God. She truly followed these words of Christ. When you did it to these, my brethren, you did it to me.